or what is the standard of good wife? What is, yes. what does it mean? And yes. sometimes we, the world's idea or other voices that we hear on social media or even from the church, uh, people's convictions, and we put that on scripture and it's not actually there. Welcome to Sound Plus Doctrine, the podcast of Sovereign Grace Music, where we explore what the Bible has to say about music and worship in the church and encourage those who plan, lead, and participate in their Sunday gatherings each week. Hello, welcome to the Sound Plus Doctrine podcast. My name is David Zimmer. My name is Bob Coughlin. Hasn't changed since the last Sound Plus Doctrine podcast episode. Never has. Never has. Never will. And we are so excited to have back with us... Yes. Caroline Cobb. Some people know her as Caroline Cobb Smith. Which you corrected me last episode. I appreciate that. You're welcome. (laughs) Caroline, it's so good to have you back. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, And if you haven't heard the other episode we did... You should listen to it. Yes, it was so great. Uh, If not right now, later, uh, because it was great. So in that episode, we talked a lot about... uh, Well, first, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Great. Yeah, I'm doing good. This is fun. I love love talking to people on podcasts. It's one of my favorite aspects of this part of the job. Do you think you could get a (laughs) full-time job doing this? Man... If only, right? <laughs> you guys just need to teach me all your ways. Well, we, we have... We're, we're selling, season we're, six we're and se- still have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> but we're selling a book that you can buy. Um, we talked a lot the last time uh, about your music and about your writing. It was so good. You said so many helpful things about how to think about being an artist, but being faithful to God's word, to the gospel. Mm-hmm. In this episode, we want to talk about uh, just the tension of doing what you do while being married to Nick and being a mom Mm -hmm. of an 11-year-old, a a faithful mom, 13-year-old, 11-year-old, 9-year-old, right? Mm -hmm. You're not just a mom, you're a faithful mom, although thank you for taking the time out to do this podcast with us. (laughs) Kids are at school. Um, How, so first question, how did you know that God was calling you to pursue being something of an artist while having so much on your plate already? I mean, so many people, so many moms would say, no way. Yeah, I don't um, have the time for that. Yeah. yeah, and that's always affected me, Caroline, when I, I follow you on Instagram. I don't follow many people on Instagram, um, but I saw you just... Loving your kids, and it wasn't mm-hmm. all about, hey, look what I'm doing, look what I'm doing. Like, you, in in between, you know, a story about, hey, I'm doing this with these people, is, yeah, I did this with my, my kids. Or my favorite were when, you know, you'd be writing a song, and then one of your kids would come and say, mom, mom, you know, <laughs> here's, the, here's my life. And I just was so encouraged by that mm-hmm. and thought, now here's... A woman who's being faithful, she's being, uh, uh, you know, fully engaged in what God has called her to do, but also feels God's called her to do this artist thing. So, yeah, how did you know that? How did you and Nick like walk through that or come to that conclusion? Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been a slow. I think it's been a really slow burn and a slow process for Which sure. Which is great um, because even in high school, I started writing songs. Uh, my mom had taught me a few chords on the guitar and I actually went out on a date with a boy who from another school who sang a song for me that he had written, not for me, <gasps> but he sang for me a song he had written. It was it good. And Wait I, it was, I don't, I don't, I think it was, it was good. <laughs> I don't remember what it was about, but I remember thinking, Hey, maybe I could do that. Cause I play guitar. But did he write the song I, for you? No, oh. no. It was a first date. Okay. So, That's what I um, used to do in high school, write songs for girls and ask them out. Uh, yes. But okay, go it ahead. Was wrote a song. It was impressive. Mm-hmm. I, I have told my son, I'm like, keep that piano up because <laughs> you it never was impressive. Know. Uh, you never know. Um, so anyway, I I did go home and think maybe I could do that. And I had just become a Christian. So my uh-huh. music and my faith kind of started at the same time. Mm. And um I just wrote a lot of songs, but I never had in my mind, I want to be a songwriter. That was just not a path that anyone around me did. Um, That wasn't what I thought I would do. It was just more of a way that I expressed myself and thing that I got to do. And then 
through college, I just wrote a ton of songs. I was always writing. Uh, but as I mentioned in the last podcast, it was just like really expensive scrapbooking, mm-hmm. you know, of like, it was like journaling, very expensive to, you know, <laughs> produce those songs and put them out into the world. So a very expensive journal or scrapbook. Um, and it was more of a hobby, but I kept that up even as I got married and had kids and all of that, but it was just, you know, in my own time. Um, but when I started to write songs that told God's story, when I started to write songs from scripture at that same time, that's when Nick had that conversation with me that said, Hey, this is a really expensive hobby. Do you want to do this? And I also found in that moment, my mission statement, really Mm -hmm. this, I want to tell the story. This is why I want to do music. And 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 that made all these other things fall into place. Define the story again. I never want to say the story without reminding right i mean the, the big story of scripture the tell the story of of god's word really from mm. you know creation from genesis all the way to revelation um that's what i love to do and just yes. to parachute into different moments of scripture and and weave together the whole thing mm-hmm. so um i think having that mission having my husband say i do want you to do this uh and also I would use my um, time that the kids were busy, say my daughter was in Mother's Day out just one one day a week when it was just Ellie at home. And instead of using that day to clean my house or go to the grocery store alone, which is so yeah. relaxing when you're a young mom, I would actually use that time for music because I knew wow. that I didn't really need a clean bathtub. Sorry, overrated. Come over to my house. Definitely overrated. Um, or I didn't really need to go alone to the grocery, and so it was the importance of carving that time out and having that goal. Um, the well, second thing that for what I, it's worth, Caroline, uh, your house looks good right now behind you. Just, just. Well, my, now my kids are all in school, so it's a little oh, bit okay, different okay. of a story. I just wanted to let you know you're doing a good job. <laughs> but you go through seasons of Thank life you. where you have to carve out time. Oh, I know. Yeah, in yeah. so many different ways. Yeah. Yes, for sure. And then, and and that's what I would say too, is that there are different seasons. And right now I'm in a season where all my kids are in school, but I've been in seasons where I only had, you know, five hours a week. Um, I've been in seasons where I only had two hours a week. When we lived in California, I had to um, pay a friend to keep my kids. And it's just for two hours because we couldn't afford mm-hmm. the preschool out there. It was just too much. And then I've had seasons where a friend of mine was a photographer and she had a business and I was doing music and we would switch kids once a week. And the That's idea awesome. behind that was Brilliant. just, does this matter? You have to kind of remember, does this matter? And now I'm in a new season where um, I have all day while they're at school, um, but I still have to struggle with that question of like, does this matter? This is really hard work. And now it's gone beyond just writing songs for my church or for the joy of just me and God. Now it's gone into more of a career, something that I love to do, you know, all across the country or writing songs with other people and continue to put out music. So it's definitely mm-hmm. changed, um, but God has been really sustaining me. And I think I'm propelled because I don't really want it to be about me. I want it to be about him. And I'm also propelled by this mission. And then I also have to remind myself that creativity and art does matter in God's kingdom, Mm -hmm. you know? So those are some things that kind of center me. Yes. Well, we can see that just from, from the way God gave us scripture. He didn't give us less line after line of data. Mm -hmm. He he gave us narratives. He gave us prophecies. He gave us apocalypse apocalyptic writings. He, mm-hmm. he gave us first person accounts. He gave just all poetry and all kinds of things to communicate this this one grand story as you were referencing earlier about his his redeeming a people for his glory through the incarnation of the Son of God who would just fill in the details, hang on a cross in our place to endure the punishment that we deserved and rise from the dead so that we could have the hope of spending eternity with God in heaven, experiencing eternal joys at his right hand. It's just a great story. And (laughs) we want to never tire of hearing that story or or telling that story. And Mm. it's so, it is a, it is a, um, a tough decision. Um, you have to value, as you said, the fact that this story is worth singing about and mm-hmm. and God's gifted you to do it creatively so so there's somewhat of a responsibility of that stewardship mm-hmm. to okay 
I, I, I want to do this. So you and Nick basically came to a place where you said, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I really, I need to go for it and, right. and make it, make it real. Yes. And, will- and that said, I mean, I do have limitations that other people don't have. Um, so talk about those. And, that was, that was one of the things yeah. we wanted to ask you. What, what re- limitations do you have? What restrictions have you placed on yourself for, for doing both and how you how have you arrived at those? Yeah, I mean, I have searched a long time for like the formula where I can. <laughs> Wait, you're on the podcast, know, so you can tell us the formula. <laughs> I wish I could. Gosh. I think what God has taught me is that there's not a formula yes. of a perfect rhythm or a perfect balance. Balance yeah. is sort of a myth, way, <laughs> and it's more of depending on Him and walking in the Spirit and talking through Good. all of yes. the decisions. I mean, I do kind of have ideas, big picture decisions. So this year, um, I really felt like I wanted to pull back a little bit on playing shows, even though I love playing shows. I wish I could just snap my fingers and be there. And it's the lead up and (laughs) getting out of town and all the work to get there. That's hard with uh, kids. I mean, I'm still playing a ton of shows, but not as many as I was before. But the problem was that I needed the financial um, aspect of playing those shows in order to keep making music. And God's really I just prayed about that and talked to people about that. And um, God's really provided through Patreon. I started a Patreon, which was scary, but really has been sweet. And then our church too has supported me recently, almost like a missionary. And that just that little has enabled me to sort of pull the lever down on playing shows or playing the shows that really not having to feel like a hustle. Like I have to playing, playing more from a spirit led place. Um, and I hope people that are listening that might host me know that I actually really like playing the shows. That's one of my favorite parts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it's coming just across. That we can't do, you know, I know I can't do as many as maybe someone else could that yes. this is their full-time job and this is part of what they've talked through. So I think that's one limit. Um, I also try to keep my work within school days and be careful about the summer. Um, mm. but I, I have to, I'm not great at limits. Um, so my husband is, he's in the other room, actually. He's probably listening to this and laughing, but uh, <laughs> he is is better at limits. And so in our relationship, he has been such a faithful reminder to me of mm. what it means to be faithful, what success really means. Hey, that's an amazing dream. But if you want to put that into reality, like you can't do that by yourself. You can't mm. do this, this, and this, which ones do you really want to do? Oh, Those questions so are really good. Um, hard, but good. And I think that's been really helpful for me along the way to figure out, you know, to live within my limits, to know that God made us with limits. Yes. Um, we're meant to rest. We can't go, go, go all the time or we'll burn out that he's God and we're not, and I don't have to keep all the plates spinning. So all of yes. those things really, have are things that I continue to wrestle through, but it's, it's not a formula. I have some rhythms, but it's always asking the Lord and always rethinking through everything. And even talking to Nick, when a new opportunity comes up and how to, how to do this, or should I, and it's a lot, it's a lot of leaning into the Lord. Yes. So great. And it seems clear from what you're saying that you, you have these priorities of, of being a wife to Nick, uh, a mom to your kids, those are like scriptural priorities that mm-hmm. God says, you know, you, you, you want to you know, relate to Nick as, Christ, as the church relates to Christ. You, you want to uh, care for your children as, you know, as God cares for us. Mm-hmm. And those are, those are scriptural priorities. Doing your music is something you feel God has called you to do but it's not doesn't rise to the same level of oh i know you know mm. this has got to take priority mm. in every situation I and mean, that's what i hear coming from you would that be accurate to some degree yeah that's true i mean i think one thing that i've learned a lot about is that i have a tendency to want to be enough for everyone for every role for every relationship mm. and i have to do a lot of discerning about what that actually means a mm. i can never i can't ever be enough right. because only christ is right. enough and that's the thing that's really freed me that i'm beloved like before i perform and yes. i'm you know never going to be enough but at the same time there's some things that it's like what does it mean to be a good faithful mom 
And sometimes we confuse and conflate maybe what the world says it means to be a, a great mom as, you know, uh, how what school we choose or how much we volunteer Mm. at that school or there's so many ways that you can I can put in my own head of what is the standard of good mom yeah but we have to listen to Christ on that or what is the standard of good wife what is what does it mean and sometimes we the world's idea or other voices that we hear on social media or even from the church of people's convictions and we put that on scripture and it's not actually there. And so I have found myself putting pressure on myself to meet a standard that's not actually from God. Yes. And so we have to ask what does faithfulness actually look like? And that does free us up when we take away some of those cultural expectations yes. or maybe the expectations we put on ourselves that are not of the Lord um, mm, about excellent. whatever, it, whatever it is in, yeah. in the domestic world or in, the church world, uh, you know, we're leaders at our church. Nick is an elder and I do a lot with the women's ministry and stuff. So I have to ask and discern, is this something that I, I feel God is calling me to do or that I should do, or is this something that I'm, you know, putting on myself because I want to be that meet that standard. So listening to God's voice again is the answer. And I haven't figured it out yet, but well, I'm no, trying. I think I'm you trying have to figured faithful. it oh, out. It sounds... I, I think of uh, Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with all vigilance for from it flow the wellsprings of life. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're talking about, why am I doing this? You know, what's the reason I, I want to be a good mom or a good, or a good artist or a good wife or a good whatever, a good women's ministry person or whatever? Why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. And if it's not to bring glory to Christ and please the Lord. Um, yeah, you better check there, <laughs> see what's going on. Right. How um, do you have okay. any limits, like in terms of weekly or monthly or yearly, where you'd say how many concerts I'm going to do? Or uh, is there anything like that? Or do you do that on a more ad hoc basis? Nick and I have like a little, um, every year we have a little, planning time in January where we talk about some things. And I do think through that a lot. I think a lot about my rhythms. Um, And also I took a sabbatical recently and I felt like there were some clear takeaways from that time. And one of them is right now I'm trying out, actually don't know if I'm actually doing this, but I was thinking, I think I could do like 12 shows a year and continue to make music. Um, And now that I have some other provision, and from these other places. Yes. And so I'm, I'm aiming for that. But then as I've done that, um, then I get so many other ideas and <laughs> then my time fills up with a bunch of creative things. So, and then in terms of, uh, creative, uh, you know, creative rhythms during the week, I am trying to Tuesday and Thursday make those creative days. So if I need to write an article or I want to write songs or, just carve those out because the whole week could be filled with manager type things or publicity or, um, you know, managing what should I put on social media or Mm -hmm. how, like putting together an agreement for this show that I'm playing and Mm -hmm. sound needs and a set list and all of that stuff. So I think I do try to be careful about not wearing the manager hat so much that I end up draining my uh my artist yes part which is really my heart and really where i thrive so um, those are some rhythms that i've put in place and then i do try to like schedule some fast from social media even if it's like three days here three days there or a month here um there's a lot of things that we kind of try to implement to c- continue to walk faithfully with god but that those are That's the smart. ones that come to my mind right now that yeah. that is so helpful. It just seems that if you don't think about these things, life's going to take over. Yeah, right. And have you had those times when life was taking over and you realize this is overwhelming? Like you mentioned, twelve oh. shows a year. Do you know what the most you've done in a year is? Have you ever counted? Um, I think I was more at a pace of like twenty five to 30. Wow. But some of those were multiple days, you know, yes, like they were more yes. like, a, so that wasn't just one day away. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing I, I think is interesting. is like 
sometimes I'll go for one weekend and then two weekends later I go again. And I do like to like pair them all together if I can, like a tour yes. yeah. Um, yeah. so that I can be on and just do it and be in that mode. But yeah, there's definitely been a lot of seasons where I felt really overwhelmed. And a lot of times when I'm feeling overwhelmed, it's because I'm trying to be enough for everybody and everything. Uh, and uh, I'm not relying on Christ who is enough and being in Christ and remembering the gospel and functioning it as, as if I really believe it's true. Um, and I also am maybe taking on some, some standards that aren't of God. So if I want to be a good musician and a good steward of this work, that means I should look like that person yes. rather than asking mm. the Lord, what does right. that mean for me? Right. Or that means I should post on social media like that person, or I should tour like that person, or I should, you know, try to get the opportunity that that person has. And I think that God always brings me back to just walking in my lane. And um, <laughs> that's when I get stressed is when I'm not mm. walking in my lane and just like looking at him when I'm trying to be enough for everybody and every role. And when I'm putting standards on myself that are not of the Lord. Yes. So. I forget. I heard someone say recently, comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about, well, I'm not doing that, that person's doing or that, you know, it just, it just robs us of. Yeah. We say that to our kids a lot. Oh, excellent. And that's a common house. So are you doing anything with your kids that involves them in what you're doing artistically? as an artist? You know, I'm trying to integrate them more into things. So like recently I played a show in Washington, DC and it was a women. I brought my daughter. That was like oh, wonderful. That's awesome. I integrating them in, asking them, Hey, this is my new song. What do you think about it? You know, just simple things like that. And then when we sit and do our devotionals in the morning, um, I try to, then we all talk and I do want to present God's word as, as exciting and interesting and, how, how can you put yourself in that story? Um, mm -hmm. Just in the same way that I want to do with my music, telling this story, that's this beautiful story. Yeah. So it comes out in a lot of different ways. That is so good. Okay. You've already said stuff that addresses this, but what would you say to a mom with young kids? And we found that, you know, this, this podcast is for basically those who plan, lead, participate in, you know, the Sunday gatherings of the church, but we find... Mm -hmm. All we've, the time. We've heard back from a lot of moms who said, yeah, well, I'm cleaning the bathroom. I'm listening to your podcast. And, you know, it's yeah, just or so I'm driving the kids to school. Or, yeah. yeah. So, so the, uh, moms listen to this podcast. What would you say to them who, who feel this bug, feel this call? Like, I, maybe I'm supposed to be doing more with my gifts. Like, yeah. I mean, you've said a lot already, but is there anything, like if you're sitting across the table from someone and just, they're saying, yeah, I, I, f I feel like songs are coming or, yeah, yeah, I'm a songwriter and, and I just, I'm doing so much with my family. What would you say to encourage them or what counsel would you give them? I mean, I would I think a lot of times with younger songwriters, there's like an all or nothing thinking that happens where, and it comes from comparison. They think, well, I can't really do it until I do it all the way yes. or until I do it yes. like them and I can go on tour or I can do it like you. And I'm sitting there thinking like, well, I'm not doing it all. I'm not doing it like that person. You know, no one's doing it. There is no it, you know, yes. just be faithful to sow into that little plot of land that's right in front of you. And so mm. I think a, like knowing that it does matter in God's kingdom and it's okay to carve out time to do it, um, whether that's trading kids, you know, with your yes, friends yes. or while they're in school, instead of, you know, doing these other things like going to the grocery. Um, I mean, you should go to the grocery. Yeah, Everyone should go to the grocery, but you know, you can take your kids in the house there. should go to the grocery. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's important, but this, but music is also, it matters. And I think mm. we live kind of in this, I, I think we're stuck sometimes in this utilitarian way of thinking where it only matters if I can see the fruit right away. So if I'm sitting across the table from someone discipling them program, or if I'm checking this box or this box, and I can see from start to finish that something new happened here and God obviously used it right away. And I think that that's sort of a utilitarian uh, machine kind of yes. way of thinking mm -hmm. where um, God 
shows us that he creates beauty for beauty's sake, but also it, it can be like a seed that they plant that can grow in due time over time. And it's important and it's good to carve out that time to do that. And even if just one, even if you're just writing a song for that one friend that is hurting mm -hmm. and that needs to hear that song, and you're the only one that can really write that song that matters in God's kingdom Great. because success isn't doing it like that person or getting this many streams. Like you don't just jump into getting a million streams on Spotify for a song. You, that's not the point. The point is that you're yes. sowing yes. God's word into, into people and that you're sowing truth and beauty and goodness into people. And so anyone can do that. Even if you just have two hours, you can sit down and try and the more you carve out time, the more your margin time is what I call when you're in the bathtub or driving your kids or playing outside with your kid, that margin time can actually serve a song as well. Like you can write in the margins all the time if you have sort of that deep work time set aside. Mm, so yes. that's what I would, I would say. Just do it. That's what I would say. <laughs> well, and you are living proof of that steady plotting and planting seeds, like you said, in that tiny garden you have in front of you, it's like you've written seven, eight records. I mean, like in the amount of since college of writing songs, it's like, uh, it's just that faithful plotting. Yes, yes. It's that faithful planting. Yeah, it's so great. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to point out too, that it, this is so enjoyable. You're really good at this because you have good things to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, just your humility, Caroline, is, yeah. I think, a big part of why the Lord blesses what you do. Again, not mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, I got three million streams on this or right. three million views, right, right, but right. in terms of really being material that serves people's souls mm. and that strengthens them and that points them to Christ. And not, not just your songs, but, your, um, but your, the way you're doing it which is so important. The message we have defines the way we do what we do. Mm -hmm. D.A. Carson wrote a book years ago called The Cross in Christian Ministry, which is a little book, but boy, what, what a... Profound. Yes, just in terms of you can't, you can't proclaim the message of the gospel and be proud about it. Yeah. Mm. Or do it in a way that tries to impress. Or put you at the center. Yes, yeah, yeah, which, which you've, you've mentioned those so things true. of I can't, can't, I don't want to be at the center of this. And so thank you for just modeling that. And, and it's just been a joy to talk with you about these things. There's plenty more we could talk with you about, yeah. but we'll have to do that another time. Uh, just want to thank you for being faithful yes. to uh, what God has called you to. And thank Nick uh, for his faithfulness in, in, in protecting you, leading you, covering you, and just giving you that encouragement to uh, pursue the things that God has put in your heart, but again, without sacrificing the things that, the other things that God has called you to, mm -hmm. um, and you yeah. do them all well and beautifully and for his glory, and uh, we are just grateful. So. Thank you, guys. Thanks for, Thanks for having me. Oh, it's been a joy. Yes. And uh, again, the album that's coming out is, I feel like, uh, like a talk show host right now. Yeah. The album that's coming out is uh, the <laughs> Psalms, the poetry of prayer. But uh, this, I think you, we've heard four songs on it, and they're just great. And can't wait for the whole thing to come out. So, thank you, and hope to you, have you on this again. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thank you for listening to Sound Plus Doctrine, the podcast of Sovereign Grace Music. Sovereign Grace Music exists to produce Christ-exalting songs and training for local churches from local churches. For more information, free sheet music, translations, and training resources, you can visit us at SovereignGraceMusic.org.